two, one, and lift off the rise of Starline. The Atlas rocket carrying the unmanned Starliner capsule survived one of its biggest challenges, only to run into problems minutes after liftoff. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it, um, and that anomaly resulted in the vehicle believing that the time was different than it actually was. NASA awarded contracts to both Boeing and SpaceX, the company owned by billionaire Elon Musk, to develop cheaper, reusable methods of going to space. NASA's astronauts have been riding Russian Soyuz rockets since retiring the space shuttle fleet eight years ago. SpaceX successfully launched its unmanned Dragon capsule into space for the first time three months ago, and Boeing is hoping to send astronauts into orbit next year. For Boeing, it's likely as a result of this to slip at least a month or two. I don't think it'll be a, 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 you know, a huge, huge delay. Um, these things happen in, in spaceflight. You get delays all the time. Uh, but it does, uh, it raises the probability that America will have to go to the Russians, cup in hand, and buy some more seats on the Russian Soyuz. This latest hitch is more bad news for Boeing. It's already paid a high price this year for two 737 MAX crashes within five months, killing 346 passengers and crew in Indonesia and Ethiopia. That caused the grounding of the MAX fleet worldwide, the removal of Boeing's chief executive, and multi-billion dollar losses to Boeing's share price and income. And production of the latest version of the world's best-selling airliner was stopped earlier this week. The difficulties of the American aerospace industry giant are a reminder that there's plenty of training and learning ahead for Boeing before NASA succeeds in the new space race, getting private companies to launch astronauts into orbit in a new type of space taxi. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, let's talk to Francisco Diego. He's a senior teaching fellow at the Department of Physics and Astronomy at University College London. So, Francisco, it seems that Starliner is now headed back to Earth. What went wrong? Uh, I think it's a very simple fault, and it's unbelievable that this thing happened. The spacecraft has on board a clock, and apparently the clock is controlling all the operations in the, in the spacecraft. <clears throat> it was launched very successfully, and then half an hour later, it's uh, separated from the rocket. That went very well. And it's supposed to take control on its own movement, and it has to lift the orbit from where it was to the orbit of the space station. But it didn't, because the clock assumed that it had already done so. And then it was a mismatch between the, the timing of the firing the rockets the, to lift it to the, to the, 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 the Starliner um, uh, rockets, to lift it to the space station, mm -hmm. and uh, it never happened. It was realized on the ground, and by coincidence, by five fatal coincidence here, they couldn't communicate with the spacecraft, because they communicate via relay satellites, and the spacecraft was in a kind of dead area, in a silent area between the two satellites, so right. any commands were not able to be sent in time there. And that was, uh, uh, finally, they aborted the whole uh, linking to the, to the International Space Station. And the spacecraft is in orbit right now, around mm -hmm. the Earth, in a lower orbit. And then it will land, apparently, the idea is to, to land the spacecraft in a couple of uh, days, somewhere in, the, in the New Mexico, somewhere there which will be also a very useful test, of course. It's not a completely failure, but uh, we miss the opportunity to dock into the space station. Sure. Francisco, this was an uncrewed mission, so no one, no humans on board. If there had been astronauts on board, could they have fixed this? Uh, the idea, I mean, what we have from NASA is that had been any astronauts on board, they would have taken control of the, of the situation and they would have succeeded in lifting the orbit to the orbit of the space station, and the mission would have been successful. Right. I see, Francisco, that this, this, um, this module and the competing SpaceX module, both of them got seed funding from NASA. Have we now seen a shift that the space race is being dominated by the private sector and governments are stepping back and just giving them money? Well, it's not so much so. Uh, we have to remember that the big capsule, the Orion capsule, that is going to take uh, astronauts beyond low Earth orbit to Mars, to, to the Moon and Mars, is being uh, 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 done by NASA. 
But uh, yes, this, um, I think there is a lot of regulation to be implemented in order to, to bring all these commercial partners into the play, especially we need to, uh, as we saw in your reportage here, to, to uh, once we are talking about launching astronauts and, and people into mm. space, we have to be careful and the regulations have to be very, very strict. Uh, in this case, it was a minor fault, I think. It's not a major, mm -hmm. a major thing, but it's, uh, it makes you think that what may happen in the future. So, Francisco, by my understanding, these modules are meant for both astronauts and commercial passengers, right? So, how soon could we see commercial passengers in space? Oh, commercial passengers. I, I think the, uh, uh, the, um, this one, this, the Starliner, and also the, um, the SpaceX uh, uh, Crew Dragon has uh, have at least one seat that uh, it was supposed to be sold to a, a, a space tourist. Uh, I would expect to not to see that in, the, in, in less than one year. Well, one year is not a very long time. Francisco Diego there, the Senior Teaching Fellow at the Department of Physics and Astronomy at University College London. Thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera. It's a pleasure.